Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. As academic registrar, it is both my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to Chelmsford Cathedral for this morning's Anglia Ruskin graduation ceremony. We've all gathered here today to celebrate the success of the class of 2019. Graduation ceremonies follow a tradition from the 15th century, and it is a tradition that has evolved since. Roughly translated, graduation means taking a step. And graduation symbolizes the move of the former student, now called a graduand, into a new role in society as a graduate, where they will use the skills and talents developed during their studies to contribute to the future advancement of society. Each graduate will cross the stage and shake hands with the vice chancellor to symbolize their transition to this new role. We will applaud them for their success so far, but also in anticipation of the contribution we expect them to make to society in the future. At the conclusion of our ceremony, the vice chancellor will formally admit all new graduates to the community of scholars. And as new members of that community, as the academic procession leaves the stage, the new graduates will join the procession and that will bring our ceremony to a close. So, with all the introductions over, it's now time for us to begin our formal proceedings. I hereby declare the ceremony to be in session, and I call upon the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Roderick Watkins, to address you all. Vice-Chancellor. Distinguished guests, graduands, family, friends, colleagues, as Vice-Chancellor of Anglia Ruskin University, it's my very great pleasure to join you today at your graduation ceremony. And firstly, to all those graduating today, my congratulations on reaching this milestone and graduating from your chosen course. Today is a day of great celebration. It's an opportunity for each of you to take stock, to reflect, and celebrate your achievements to date but also to look forward to exciting careers that stretch out in front of you. And whatever career you enter, you are the future. You now have the opportunity and the responsibility to embrace and promote change, to implement new ideas and new ways of working. The passion, energy, and commitment that led you to undertake your ARU degree and gave you the strength and resilience to succeed in that task can now be applied to building your careers and realizing your aspirations. And whether your future lies in education or health or social care, business, law, science, technology or the arts, with your passion and your expertise, you really can now make a difference helping society to address the challenges that we all face. And we will have succeeded in our task if we have helped you to develop the skills, confidence, and determination to influence and lead your professions, to promote change, and to achieve your ambitions. As well as serving our students, we at ARU are fully committed to serving our region and the communities in which we are based. Economic development, social inclusion, business support, tackling health inequalities. Each of these is fundamentally an important element of our mission, transforming lives through innovative, inclusive, and entrepreneurial education and research. And our reach extends well beyond the eastern region in which we are based. We are a genuinely global community of students and researchers. We attract students from all over the world, that's 170 countries at the moment, and they flourish with us because they find a second home here. And our researchers, too, have worldwide reach and impact. Our Vision and Eye Research Institute, for example, is leading life-changing research into the avoidance and management of diabetic retinopathy right across South Asia. And colleagues in our Medical Technology Research Center have recently won funding to develop accurate and affordable wearable technology to monitor the respiratory rates of newborn infants in refugee camps. So in our research, as in our education, we are having real 
tangible impact on people's lives. And that's something of which we can all be proud. And the last academic year has been very successful for ARU. We opened our new School of Medicine right here in Chelmsford. We opened law clinics in Cambridge and Chelmsford. We became the UK's second largest provider of degree apprenticeships. We were named one of the top 150 universities in the world for health education and were chosen to host the 2020 British Science Festival. Our researchers have won grants from world-class funders, including the European Research Council, the Leverhulme Trust, Alzheimer's Society, and the Medical Research Council, and awards including a Churchill Fellowship, an OBE, and a BAFTA nomination. And our students, too, have won innumerable prizes, including the Victoria and Albert Illustration Award, the Royal Television Society Award, and the Chartered Management Institute's Apprentice of the Year. But above all, we define our success as a university by the positive impact we have on the lives of our students and the communities we serve. And for us to succeed, we will need your support as our newest alumni. Because the support we receive from our alumni really does make a difference, adding value to the education we provide to our students and supporting our researchers to push boundaries. So please help us build links with your networks and your professions and spread the good word about your university. Before I close, I would like, please, to pay special tribute to your families and friends who have provided you with their constant support throughout your education. You and we owe them our sincere gratitude, so thank you. And I would like also to thank and acknowledge the work of my colleagues, staff right across ARU, for their tireless commitment and professionalism and their profound contribution to all aspects of your courses. So, once again, my warm congratulations to you all. I do hope you enjoy today. This is your day. I wish you well wherever your ARU degree takes you, and please do stay in touch. ARU is your university for life, and our success and your success are inextricably linked. Thank you. Vice-Chancellor, thank you. So we now come to our main business for today's ceremony, the presentation of those receiving awards. And I now call upon Senior Pro Vice-Chancellor and Dean of Faculty, Professor Ruth Taylor, to come to the podium to present to the Vice-Chancellor graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education, Medicine and Social Care. Professor Taylor. Vice-Chancellor. It is my pleasure to present to you graduands from the Faculty of Health, Education, Medicine and Social Care. For the award of foundation degree in the sciences, assistant practitioner, nursing, Saji John Ambalaveil. <laughs> Harriet Grace Andrews. Evelyn Aronson. Nicola Jane Brown. Lindsay Diana Carnahan. Amy Louise Cattle. Sally Charles. Robin Jade Corrigan. Whitney Jean K. Cunningham. Lorraine Day.
Natasha Jane Gilbert. Triffy Giles. Simone Elaine Gorham. Nicola Jane Hanscom. Samantha Hardway. Raja Ramesh Kumar Hariandreo. Emma Louise Harvey. Laura Jane Hickmott. Vanessa Jane Cox, Knox. Alison Jane Laird. Shannon Lee Lambert. <laughs> Kerry Louise Long. <laughs> Jordan Amy Ashley Marshall. <laughs> Zoe Martin. <laughs> Lynn Michelle McGuinn. Michelle Louise McIver. <laughs> Claudia Lodchin Kuwicks. <laughs> Donna Norris. <laughs> Justine Nicole Osborne. <laughs> Bianca Jade Pickett. Samantha Louise Quinlan. Maxine Rogers. Michelle Sanderson. Kirsten Ann Shrimpton. Shirley Elaine Smallwood Hearn. Kathleen Lorraine Stewart. <laughs> Megan Rachel Stokes. <laughs> Gareth Thomason. <laughs> Shanae Patrice Jessica Thompson. <laughs> Rachel Kathleen Tomlin Flack. Niles David Vass. <laughs> Rosemary Eugenie Vowles. <laughs> Lucy Ellen White. <laughs> Emma Willis. <laughs> Holly Wyborn. Danielle Courtney York. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Nursing Adult, Doris Abanqua. Pulcheri Kosengo. Roxanne Violet Tomlinson. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Acute Care, Mary Ibaronke Ajayi. <laughs> Laura Blamire.
Louisa May Fountain. Maudie Hoy. Johanna Maria of Stotter McPherson. Lydia and Love You. Yvonne Patsanza. Sarah Ann Schofield. Veronica Smith. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Children and Young People, Bridget Patricia Hennessy. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Palliative and End of Life Care, and also receiving the Kim Tri Memorial Award, Louise Ruston. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Midwifery, Emily Bush. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Mental Health, Liz Lowe. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours International Nursing Studies, Sola Adiego. Olusegan Oluremi Adesina. And Gozi Chinonyelam Chibuike. Chiamaka Ifunanya Chikwuku. Chido Michael Ekeruo. Sayaka Kubota. Chidinma Mercy Okoli. Chinello Javita Okpara. Oleinka Blessing Shangatola. Don Tangub. Ike Chukwu Uruukpa. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, that partially completes the list of graduates for me today. <laughs> Professor Taylor, thank you. Each year, ARU confers a number of honorary awards on individuals outstanding in their field of endeavor and who we hope will act as a source of inspiration to those crossing the stage today. Their stunning achievements should make us realize that our own success to date is merely a starting point, and they pose the question, should we too not aspire to success such as theirs? I now call upon Pro Vice-Chancellor, Professor Ruth Jackson, to come to the podium to read the citation for the award of Doctor of Health Sciences Honoris Causa for Professor Roger Motson. I just promoted her. Vice-Chancellor. It is my pleasure to read the citation for Professor Roger Motson for the award of Honorary Doctor of Health Sciences. Professor Motson is a distinguished clinical academic, founding director and currently president of the Iceni Surgical Education Centre in Colchester, and since 2001, holder of a visiting chair in surgery at Anglia Ruskin University. After studying medicine at Charing Cross Hospital Medical School, University of London, 
Roger took up house officer posts at the West London Hospital before being appointed senior house officer at the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital and later senior house officer in emergency medicine at Wexham Park Hospital. He then took up a research fellowship at the Kennedy Institute of Rheumatology, after which he turned his attention to surgery, taking up a surgical registrar post at Chichester, a further research fellowship at the University of California, San Francisco, and further registrar posts at Norfolk and Norwich and Whips Cross Hospitals. In 1978, Roger was appointed Senior Surgical Registrar at the Royal London where he worked alongside Sir Alan Parks. There, in the early 1980s, he undertook a further training, including a clinical fellowship in Hong Kong, which culminated in his appointment in 1984 as consultant surgeon at Colchester University Hospital. Over the next three decades, Professor Motson was to have a huge impact in the field of laparoscopic surgery as he pioneered new techniques in minimally invasive surgery and trained countless surgeons in innovative new procedures. Roger has made an enormous contribution to the clinical academic community, publishing over 150 articles, giving more than 450 invited lectures and sitting on the editorial boards of 11 peer-reviewed journals. After run, running one of the first courses for laparoscopic cholecystectomy in 1992, he has made a sustained and significant contribution to the advancement of surgical education and research at a local, national and international level, including 12 visiting professorships in the Americas, Europe, <coughs> Middle East, Far East and Australasia. In 2005, Professor Motson was appointed director of the Colchester University Hospital's ICENI Centre for Laparoscopic Surgery, where, until his retirement in 2018, he helped train hundreds of consultants, surgeons in training, and theatre nurses. He has served as president of the Association of Laparoscopic Surgeons of Great Britain, the Royal Society of Medicine's section of coloproctology, the Colchester Medical Society and the International Society of Laparoscopic Colorectal Surgeons. In a recent media interview, Professor Motson stated that his proudest achievement had been establishing laparoscopic surgery at Colchester and embracing the fantastic opportunities it brought for improving patient care. And in this, his impact cannot be overstated. The techniques he pioneered have become the norm and today, a great many patients rightly assume that their treatment will be carried out using keyhole surgery rather than more invasive techniques, thanks in part to his outstanding work. Professor Motson is also an accomplished sailor. He has completed numerous fast net, Bermuda, Sydney Hobart races and competed in the Admiral's Cup a part of the winning British team led by the then Prime Minister Edward Heath in 1971. As an outstanding physician, surgeon and educator, Professor Motson will be an inspirational role model for our students and researchers. And coming so soon after the opening of our new School of Medicine, this is a timely and appropriate award and one that will raise our profile in the national international surgical community. We are delighted to welcome Professor Roger Motson to our ARU community. Vice Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present Professor Roger Motson for the award of Doctor of Health Sciences, Honoris Causa. As Vice-Chancellor of Anglia Ruskin University, I hereby confer on you, Professor Roger Motson, the award of Doctor of Health Sciences, Honoris Causa. Congratulations.
Vice Chancellor, honoured guests and students. I'm particularly addressing the students who I envy greatly at uh, obtaining their degree because just between you and me, they've got the wrong bloke for this job. I'm a serial exam failure. Three, three of the equivalent to GCSEs, one A-level, and medical finals twice. And in what subject? Surgery. <laughs> but in the words of Rudyard Kipling, if you can treat triumph and failure and see these two imposters as what they are, you will uh, find a lot about yourself, uh, find your determination to succeed when things don't seem so good. And I think you'll find in your life to come, you'll learn more in your endeavors in business or academia that your, shall we say, your non-successes will teach you a lot more than, than your the major successes. That's where you find the way forward. And uh, one good example is Sir James Dyson, who had 220 iterations of his different vacuum cleaner before it was ready for market. Lots of failure to get uh, what was an amazing success. Now, when uh, laparoscopic surgery began about 30 years ago, the adjectives that describe it didn't really exist. And probably the best way of describing it is, is disrupting technology, very much like Uber have disrupted the world of taxis, Airbnb have disrupted the world of hotels, and Amazon is ravaging the high street. It was a complete change where the established world of surgery thought this isn't real, this can't be the way that surgery is going to go in the future. Big incisions, long hospital stays, and all that is, has changed over the last 30 years and you're probably the first generation that regards surgical, uh, called keyhole surgery, the so-called, as normal, whereas most of the people in the audience have seen it come along and change their view of what surgery um, used to be. And I've been very lucky and, and privileged to be part of that revolution because it was pretty revolutionary. I have today as my, my guest two of my colleagues, a consultant physician who was brave enough to entrust me with his patients when he knew they were going to be undergoing this new technology. A consultant anesthetist who had to learn a different way of, or create a different way of giving anesthetics to patients who are sometimes almost standing on their head um, because you use gravity to, to change the position. But I think the key message I'd love to, like to give you is to work in a team. They were part of my team. My wife was obviously a very big part of the team, uh, patiently waiting for me to come home after long operating sessions as we devise these, these new techniques. And I'm not here today, and there are many surgeons who I work with in, in Colchester and those that have passed through my hands. And real success comes from team. You can't do that much on your own. And if you can build a team around you that will uh, help you or be part of somebody else's team. The success of a team is so much greater than the success of an individual. And when things aren't quite right, the team, the team will support each other. And so that uh, is my advice to you, to try and work in, in groups rather than alone. It's a great honor to receive this award, and I receive it very much on behalf of the surgeons of Colchester and the nurses of Colchester who have helped us get to the position that we are today. Thank you very much. Professor Motton, many congratulations. We now continue with our main business, the presentation of those receiving awards. And once again, I call on Senior Pro Vice Chancellor and Dean of Faculty, Professor Ruth Taylor, to return to the podium to continue to present to the Vice Chancellor graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education, Medicine, and Social Care. Professor Taylor. Vice Chancellor. It is my pleasure to continue the presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education, Medicine and Social Care. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, Counselling and Psychotherapy, Amanda Jane Drury. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, Early Childhood Studies, Sheila Rebecca Waithira Mungai.
Jean Mwalitata Mwalitata. For the award of Diploma of Higher Education, Social Care and Wellbeing, Flora Yuda. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Social Care and Wellbeing, Kike Adenrele. Tiniola Sara Awanuga. Sally Muldoon. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours Social Work, Thomas Richard Devonish. For the award of Master of Arts Social Work, Stephanie Hadlow. For the award of Postgraduate Certificate Critical Care, Eugene Susan Abraham. Hannah Louise Ashworth. Isabella Kemka. Kranos Manaveli. Vinitha George. Angela Toulone. For the award of Master of Science, Clinical Nursing, Marian Olabusola Aulausa. <laughs> Ashlyn Annette Fernandez. <laughs> Rachel Olisaka. <laughs> Millicent Osse. Hope if Ian were a fundu. For the award of Master of Science Advanced Practice, Charlotte Hochter. For the award of Master of Science Advanced Nursing Practice, Martin Leonard Bailey. Fiona Ann Hawkes. Kim Elaine Holland. Abiola Temilola Phillips. For the award of Master of Science Mental Health, Godlin Wendy Nketchi Kikchikwe. For the award of Master of Science Women's and Children's Health, Emmanuel Kofi Gayassi. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science Child and Adolescent Mental Wellbeing, Paula Jane Humphreys. <laughs> Festa Naza Enwaduki. For the award of Master of Arts Education, Elizabeth Anna Amy. <laughs> For the award of Postgraduate Certificate Medical and Healthcare Education, Alison Griffiths. <laughs> Imelda Esther Hodgkinson. For the award of Master of Science, Medical and Healthcare Education, Katie Louise Burst. Adrian Philip Debney.
Andrea Helen Higgin. Catherine Irma Johnson Green. Emma Keyworth. Aisha Siddiqua. Hannah Spencer. Sylvia Carolina Tichanau. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Business and Healthcare Management, Regina Owusuwa and Poma Nkasa. For the award of Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Ovidija Tutliti. For the award of Master of Science, International Project Management, Luminita Butuc. For the award of Master of Business Administration, Zhao Wan Kui. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours Business and Computing, Mirza Iqbal Nazir. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Quantity Surveying, David Robert Kinane. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Public Health, Vatlin Kamara. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Social Care and Wellbeing, MN Ufot John Udondem. Vice Chancellor, that completes the list of graduates for me to present to you today. Professor Taylor, thank you. Congratulations to everyone who crossed the stage. Um, in addition to your own success, there are a number of graduates with whom you studied who, for one reason or another, have, um, have been unable to attend today's ceremony. To acknowledge their success, can I ask you all to join me in applauding their success too? We are now nearing the end of the ceremony, but first I should like to ask Emma Harvey, one of our wonderful new graduates, to come to the podium to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of all of those receiving awards today. Emma. Vice-Chancellor, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, fellow graduates, it is my pleasure to offer the vote of thanks today on behalf of myself and all the students graduating at this ceremony. Two years ago, on my first day at Anglia Ruskin, I can remember walking into induction week with some of the students before you today, feeling several emotions all at once. I was excited and I was also very anxious. I had thoughts racing around my head, questioning this new chapter in my life. Am I sure I want to do this? Will I be able to do this? I'm sure I wasn't alone in my thoughts and that for every thought and feeling I had, I was reassured that someone else that day was probably thinking the exact same thing. Fast forward and here we stand today. We can leave all of our uncertainty and apprehension behind because we have succeeded. Today we leave Anglia Ruskin University with qualifications in our respective studies and we leave with enhanced knowledge new friendships, fond memories, and the confidence in ourselves to go forward as competent healthcare practitioners. 
When we began our journey into higher education, we all came from different backgrounds and experiences, but with the commonality of working together to help others, to provide exceptional care and compassion to those in need. Many people have graduated before us today, but none of us could have done so without the support of others. Today, there are many people to thank and to whom we express our sincerest gratitude. I'd like to start by thanking our lecturers and personal tutors. Thank you sincerely for your guidance, for imparting your knowledge and supporting us to achieve our goal of becoming healthcare practitioners that we are today. Thank you for helping us to succeed in our assignments and encouraging us to achieve our highest potential when we felt like giving up. You were confident in each and every one of us that we could achieve more than we thought we deserved and helped us develop professionally, personally and academically. I'd also like to thank the faculty and administrative staff, student services and the countless other staff working behind the scenes to make Anglia Ruskin such a wonderful place to learn. I'd like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to our families here today. Thank you for being our support and our shoulder to cry on in times of frustration. And thank you for being our cheerleaders and rejoicing in our successes. Thank you for listening to us at the end of our day when we were so excited to have learned something new, even if you didn't understand a thing we were going on about. It felt amazing to explain our learning to you reinforcing the fact that what we were learning was actually sticking and we actually understood it. Thank you for being up for us there in the simplest ways when we felt exhausted and ready to give up from late nights of studying. Those cups of tea, glasses of wine and relaxing bubble baths helped us more than you will ever know. Thank you for caring for us so that we could carry on caring for others. We are so glad you are all present here today to celebrate our hard work and our success. Finally, to my fellow graduates, it is my privilege to congratulate you on your achievements today. I would like to thank you all for making the last two years special and memorable. We started this journey as strangers, but stand here today as friends, colleagues, and practitioners in our respective fields. For some of us, this is the closing of our academic chapter, and for others, it's merely the start. However, I know that we will all continue to learn and develop in our knowledge and experiences as healthcare is a never-ending road with new developments and opportunities around every corner. I myself cannot, see to, uh, cannot wait to see what lies ahead. Vice-Chancellor, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to express my gratitude for and on behalf of the class of 2019. Congratulations, everybody. Emma, thank you, and very well done. I now call for one final time on the Vice-Chancellor to address the new graduates. Vice-Chancellor. So now, please, will all those who have been presented to me here on this stage, will you please stand? As Vice-Chancellor of Anglia Ruskin University, I hereby admit you to the degrees, diplomas and awards for which you have been presented to me today. As a member now of the community of scholars, take all that you have learned into society and uphold the values of freedom of thought and scholarship. Our warmest congratulations to you all. us to the end of the ceremony and I hereby declare proceedings closed. Can I now ask everybody to stand for the academic procession? Sorry.